Hey guys, welcome back to Lemonhead Garage. Today we have an electric ladder right here. We're actually gonna put some risers and uh, uh, thrashing bars on it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take off the whole uh, headlight housing so that we can get behind the fairing and pull the main fairing off. Inside the fairing, there's four 7 16th bolts that you need to loosen up. You don't have to take it off all the way, but once you loosen it up, you can pull the fairing out through the front. Mine has an aftermarket system. I'm just gonna cut the zip ties to get some space. So depending on how your system is set up, you might have a few tabs on the top and the sides. Um, all you gotta do is bend them down so you can push it forward. On the end of your throttle cables, there should be these gold ferrules. Um, be sure not to lose them, they can fall easily and be hard to find. Here you'll see me removing the clamps on the handlebars. Be sure to undo the bolts on the bottom first. If you don't, it'll start spinning and be really hard to take off. So in order to pull the key fob off, just pull this pin right here and then make sure the key fob is in the lock position and you can just pull it straight out. Here you see me using a Dremel. I'm just trying to make some space for the thrash and supply adapter. Uh, I went with that one because it's a little bit sleeker and I like the style and I'm sure it's going to be great quality. Here you see me just assembling the risers and the adapter together. I just put two drops of Loctite on it so that it will hold and won't kind of unbolt itself. Um, just remember to do clamp the top clamp on or whatever kind of riser you're using. I'm doing this so that when I tighten it, it doesn't turn and make it uneven for the bars. So if you look down here, there's like the li this little mounting thing for this ignition switch. But since this is tightening down, it's actually touching it and it's clamping it a little hard. So it won't even go into the lock position. Um, so I'm gonna have to shave the other side of this probably with a sander so that it can get some more space. Or I can put a washer on each side. So we're gonna see which uh, option works better.
Okay, so this is what I was talking about, this little bracket. This is what it was hitting on. Uh, I tried pulling it out, but it was a bit difficult. So I think shaving the other thing would be a little bit easier. Um, since this is a budget build, um, that's why I'm trying to use tools that like not everybody may have that, or is just a little bit cheaper. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, I put it back on already. It seems to fit fine, so let's try to re-bolt everything back together. So I put the bracket back in, and we're going to work set up and everything. I ended up shaving just uh, how much it was in the last clip, and then I sprayed some enamel on the rear end so that it wouldn't rust or anything. I mean, it looks a little bit better. Um, and yeah, other than that, I just put some blue lock tight and just tighten it back up. I don't know about you guys, but I think this setup looks sick. I think that's pretty dope. Would recommend. So now I'm just gonna pull the controls so that I can wire them into the handlebars. Um, they're a little bit short, so you're gonna see me lengthen it in the whole process there. It's pretty simple if you know how to do a little bit of wiring, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Since some of the wires are used twice, but one is solid and one has a stripe, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and grab my Sharpie and draw a line going down the wire. By doing so, it'll help me differentiate between the, the two different colors. So now we're just going to strip all of these. This Erwin tool is probably one of the best investments I've ever made. So here you can see these little heat shrink things that I used, um, I'll put them in the description below, they're actually super useful. It melts the solder onto the wires inside with like a heat gun or a lighter, so it saves you some time. Now that you know how to do it, just do the same thing on the other side. I'm just using some rubber trims that I ordered on Amazon. I'll also include this in the description below. It's pretty easy to put on and I think it'll make it look a little bit better. At the same time, it'll help the stereo from just shaking back and forth and making noise. So now we're going to go ahead and put everything back together, um, just the way it was taken apart. You can do what I did, having a video helps a lot, especially from your own bike. You can see where things went, maybe something fell out if you forgot. Uh, this took me over the course of maybe four or five days just with other things I was busy. So having a video really helped me. Um, for me, I also had a clip of blue wire. I don't know if you saw it in the beginning, um, but for me, I had to solder that back together. I just used one of those heat shrinks with the solder inside.
And don't forget to plug your handlebar controls back in afterwards or you're not going to have any controls. So I plugged everything back in, threw the battery back in, um, and now I'm going to test and see if this light and all the gauges work. Perfect. So these four bolts right here are just going to line up to these four mounts and then you're going to tighten them. 